So here we're going to be talking about binomial probability, defining the number of trials. So this means, for example, if there's a probability of someone passing a test, for example, how many trials is it going to be before they have a 90% chance of passing? Yeah? All right, so let's have a look at some questions to do with that. So firstly, in question three, we've got this great soccer player and this soccer striker scores with a probability of 0.3. So let's find the number of shoots that this soccer player needs to try in a game so there's at least a 90% chance of scoring, all right? So if the probability is 0.3 that he scores, then the probability of missing is 0.7, yeah? And therefore the number, the probability that N shoots misses the game, misses the goal, is 0.7 to the power of N, so however many shoots there are. All right, so therefore, 1 minus 0.7n is going to represent the probability that he scores. Yeah, does that make sense? If this is what misses is, then 1 minus that will be scores. So therefore, we want to find the probability that of scores when it's greater than 90%. Yeah, so that's why we've put in 1 minus 0.7 to the power of n greater than 0.9. And now we want to find out the number of shoots that's necessary for that. So the first thing we would do is just subtract 1 from this side. So that becomes negative 0.1, right? And then we just can get rid of the negatives. So flip the sign, 0.7 to the power of n is less than 0.1. And now we use log. Now, so the thing you need to remember about log is when we use log in an inequality and this is less than one, we need to flip the sign, yeah? So since that is less than one, we need to flip the sign. So instead of less than, it's gonna be greater than like that, okay? And always remember the base of that index here becomes the base of the log and that 0.1 goes there. So just put that into Actually, you can't put that straight into your calculator. You need to know how to change the base, yeah? Do you guys remember that? So let's change the base to log base 10. And this 0.1 goes on top and log base 10. And since that's a base, I remember that goes on bottom like that, okay? And just put that into your calculator and you should get 6.4556. So N must be greater than that, so therefore, this soccer player's got to shoot at least seven times before there's actually a 90% chance of scoring, which is actually quite um, terrible when you think about it. So just remember, when you have log there, you need to flip the sign if it's less than one, which is always going to be in these binomial probabilities. So just remember, flip the sign there. Okay, good. So this is what we found out for question three. Let's have a look here, and we're going to be working with a dice question in question four. So here we have a 10-sided dice. Now, we want to find the number of 10-sided dice that must be thrown so there is at least an 80% chance of getting at least one seven, all right? So first of all, because it's a 10-sided dice, what's the chance that you're going to get one seven? Well, it'll be 0 0.1, yeah? So the chance of getting no seven is going to be 0 0.9. So the chance of getting no sevens over time is going to be 0 0.9 to the power of n, which means the chance of getting at least one seven is just going to be one minus that probability, like that, okay? And we just want to find out that when this is greater than 80%, which is 0 0.8. So that's how we come up with this equation there. And now it's just a matter of solving it. So subtract one from this side, this becomes negative 0 0.2, Flip the sign, get rid of the negatives. So 0 0.9 power of n is less than 0 0.2. And now we have to take the logarithm of that. And because it's less than one, we need to flip the sign again. So it becomes n is greater than log base 0 0.9, 0 0.2, okay? And now we change the base on log base 10, 0 0.9. And this is what you put into your calculator and you should get 15.275, so on. So n must be greater than that. So you just find the next number along, which is 16, 
So this tells us there has to be at least 16 dice thrown for us to get at least one seven, okay? So just remember when we're finding out how many trials there has to be, what you wanna work out is not the probability of how to get it, but the probability of the opposite of that, and then it's to the power of n. And then one minus that tells you over time the probability of getting that. And then you just wanna make that greater than the probability you wanna achieve and then work it out. And just remember when you're using the logarithm here, you need to flip the sign because that's less than one.